flying helicopters in Hawaii. Full circle rainbow. Today I'm going to demystify what it takes in order to become a helicopter tour pilot in Hawaii. First, you have to get your helicopter pilot certificate, which starts at finding a flight school for an intro flight to see if you like it. An intro flight is usually about $200 for a 30 minute flight. In an intro flight, you will be in a helicopter with an instructor and two sets of controls. If you mess up, they will fix it. Okay. You'll be flying a helicopter on your first lesson. The next step is to get an aviation medical, which costs about $100, to see if you have any medical conditions that could prohibit you from flying. Contrary to popular belief, you do not need to have perfect vision in order to fly. Oh, really? The next step is to start going to flight school. So do a little research on flight schools, pick a flight school, and get your private and commercial pilot rating. Private comes first and will allow you to fly your friends around, Yay! but not get paid. Commercial rating lets you get paid to fly. Oh my gosh! Getting a rating requires three main parts. Study, fly, and financing. The study involves a small handful of books on aviation rules, weather, aeronautical knowledge, flying principles, and your specific aircraft. The flying for the private pilot rating involves at least 40 hours of flying, though closer to 60 hours is more common. There is a very specific set of flying tasks you have to complete to actually get your certificate. You will need to take and pass a written test where you'll be asked multiple choice questions on a well-outlined list of topics that you will have studied, an oral test where an examiner will ask you questions in person to make sure you know what you need to know, and a practical test where you will fly for one hour doing a specific set of predetermined tasks. Each task is well outlined as well as the criteria required for passing each task, so there should not be any surprises. <sighs> now I mentioned earlier that the private pilot rating lets you fly you and your friends around, but not get paid. That's where the commercial pilot's rating comes in. This takes 150 hours of flying experience total and another written, oral, and flying test. The process is similar to the private pilot test, however there's some more topics to study, finer tune tolerance for the flying test, and there's some additional flying tasks you will have to complete before you take the test. This all takes a full-time dedicated student four to six months if full-time, one year if half-time, and one to two years if flying while working full-time. Financing. So helicopter school is not cheap. So how on earth can someone pay for such training if the typical cost to get a commercial helicopter riding is sixty to seventy thousand dollars? Seriously? Well, there are five common routes. Mm -hmm. One. The student loan. I know of people who have taken out a student loan for all of their flight oh my gosh! If you're fairly young with not much credit history, most loaners will require you to have a co-signer. So if you have a parent willing to co-sign you on a loan, that definitely helps. Oh, really? Two, a second career. I know many people who saved money from a previous career and then decided to change careers and use some of their savings for training. A close friend of mine, for example, sold his business and decided to start helicopter training in his mid-40s. Wow! Another friend of mine worked as an airline pilot and when getting close to 60 decided to become a helicopter pilot. Yep. Three, you can do a mix of both of these. This is actually what I did. So I had some savings for my previous career as a scientist, but I also had to take out a student loan to finance about half of my training. Four, military. Now this is actually two options. One is that you can join the military and become a helicopter pilot. This means your training is covered. But you do, of course, have to commit a certain number of years to staying in the military. Yep. The other military option is to join the military in a non-pilot position. Finish your military commitment and use GI Bill benefits to help pay for your training at an approved school. Now, they'll pay for your, some of your professional training, which could mean all or most of your commercial pilot certificate is covered, but you will be on the hook for your private pilot rating, which typically on itself costs twenty dollars to $30,000. It may take some patience to pay for helicopter school, but the fact is, if it takes a while, that's okay. Some people in their heads think, oh, well, if I don't start by the time I'm age X, I can't do it, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Oh, really? So, great. You finished your commercial pilot rating. Time to start tours, right? Well, it turns out when you're first trying to get a job flying tours, all the job postings seem to require 1,000 hours, 1,500 hours, and sometimes 2,000 hours. Seriously? How on earth can you even get to 1,000 hours? 
With helicopter rental prices, that would cost an addition $275,000. Don't worry, you won't have to spend that, and I personally do not know anyone who has taken that route. There's another way to get those hours, and that is to teach other people how to fly who were in your shoes 150 hours ago. Great, so you're telling me somebody with near 150 hours can't fly tours, but they can teach people how to fly? What? Well, not quite, but almost. You'll need to get your flight instructor rating, which is another set of tests, and most flight instructor jobs will require 200 hours of total time. So another 50 hours, another 20 to $30,000, and now you can get a job as a flight instructor. I did exactly this. Many people get a flight instructor job teaching where they learned to fly. However, when I graduated helicopter school at that time, they were not hiring flight instructors. And so I found a job teaching at a flight school in South Korea, which was a blast. I worked there for one year and that got me from 200 to 800 hours. Mm. Now, while you're working as a flight instructor, your pay is going to be quite low. That's typically around $25 an hour while you are working. It certainly poses a little bit of a challenge, especially if you are coming from a previous career. Now, I mentioned most tour operations require at least 1,000 hours, if not more. There are a few exceptions to this, with some of the smaller operations flying smaller helicopters, and not just in Hawaii, but in other locations as well. I got a job flying an R-44 for a smaller operation on Oahu, and the R-44 is a four-person helicopter, so the pilot and usually two or three passengers. In less than one year, I got up to 1,400 hours. Now, one of the benefits of flying for this smaller operation is that a lot of the larger helicopter companies really do prefer if you have some Hawaii flying experience. Yep. That doesn't mean you have to have it, it just definitely gives you an edge. Yeah. And the reason for that is the weather in Hawaii is quite particular, so anyone who has some experience with that already does have an edge over someone who does not. So at that point, with 1,400 hours in helicopters, I applied for a job flying tours in Hawaii for a company that flew MD-500s, EC-130s, and A-Star 350s. So this was quite a blast. After flying larger helicopters on tours, photo missions, helo casting, and skydiving, and note that sometimes I jump out also, but not when being the pilot. And after a few thousand hours of that and a pandemic, I wanted to go back to flying these smaller helicopters again while working on my own business projects on the side. And as you can see, the Nene is still here. I'm looking at the Nene on the screen right now because, well, it really helps to talk to a Nene.